So uh, that brings us to our last film for today. Um, Possibly the most divisive. This one is is going to be interesting. Um, I'll let you introduce it because I oh, think. Uh, hold on. Let me just uh, rub my hands together. Um, it's the Color Out of Space, which is linked to Come to Daddy because it's produced by Spectre Vision, which is Elijah Wood's production company. That's interesting. Um, directed by Richard Stanley in his first directorial features in since the, the Island of Dr. Maru, which I was in 96, I think. There's a whole side story about that. Oh, He was kicked off that film, wasn't he? He was indeed, but I feel like if we got into the whole story of why it happened, we'd be here. We could fill a whole other episode. Yeah, but so what you're saying is like this film is a return to form. Well, no, it's just a return full stop. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he's had a couple of writing features, but it's his first directorial job since then that I'm aware of. Um, and it's starring none other than Nicolas Cage. And... Who else? Have I'm, I, I've just written down Nicholas Cage mainly because that's all you need. You got Jolie Richardson, Madeline Arthur, and Tommy Chong. But all you need to really know is it's Nicholas Cage at peak Nicholas Cage. What more do you want? Um, it's a H.P. Lovecraft adaptation of the short story of the same name. A meteorite lands on the Gardner family's alpaca farm. And it brings a strange light and infection with it that slowly starts to bend reality around everything. And that's about all I can say, mainly because it would take too long to explain and mainly because you wouldn't believe me if I did. And also, I'm going to add, because it doesn't really matter what happens after that, does it? Because, I mean, this is a, this is a genre called cosmic horror. I mean, if, if you're if you're well-versed with cosmic horror... You basically just throw out the rule book because there is nothing that you can do or say within cosmic horror that makes any sense and subscribes to anything that you've seen before. And I am not a fan. (laughs) This is where it's going to be divisive because I have been reading H.P. Lovecraft for years, like since I was a teenager. Um, this wasn't one of my favourite short stories of his, but it's one I'm familiar with enough to know the source material. And as much as I want to disagree with you, I understand where you're coming from. In that cosmic horror is is what Lovecraft does. Like as he built his whole career, well, he built his posthumous career on it because no one really cared when he was alive. But it is so much down to. The fear of the unknown, the outer world, fear of things we can't even comprehend. And if we even came into contact with these beings or whatever it was, it would just engulf us in fear of something that we do not understand whatsoever. Such a nerd. This is, this is, this is breaking point. <laughs> you almost insulted Piers Brosnan earlier and now you're coming for HP. Actually, no, you can come for HP Lovecraft. His books are good, but he, it sounded like he's a bit of an arsehole. Um, but in that respect... I liked it only because I could kind. I feel like anyone that enjoys that style of writing and that source material will probably like it because it is just batshit crazy, basically. But I can completely get that someone that isn't into that wouldn't appreciate, especially as this is a hard one to adapt without it being completely out there, and it's an odd choice for them to go full Lovecraft and full Cage in the same film. I think. The casting for Cage was perfect. I think, you know, this is the kind of thing where, you know, you, you get everything out of him. You get everything out of his, as of recent, sort of limited acting range, which I know is probably going to piss off a few people. But, and me included, but yeah. But my my main bugbear is I understand that cosmic horror and and this film in particular kind of sticks its middle finger up to logic, but... At the end of the day, I don't think that that's an excusable defence for poor script writing. And I don't see that there was enough thought or consideration put into how this script functioned. I know there wasn't necessarily going to be a, uh, a logical narrative um, pathway, but I found it really difficult to, uh, to get along with some of the some of the things which I just felt were just glaring absences in any consideration in this script. Can I just say, that sounds eerily similar to what people said about 2001 A Space Odyssey when it came out. Just say it! No, I'm we're joking. It's definitely not on the same fucking... Pe- like, I, 
please, I was joking. Anyone that hears that and think I wasn't joking, I was, because I fucking love 2001. But I get what you're saying, and I think it's one of those that we could argue about it all day, and I'm probably not going to change your mind. You are very set in your ways with this. I gave it a six. I wrote maybe seven, but then I feel like it could have been done better, and I feel like it's an odd choice for them to adapt such like a deep part of the Lovecraft stories that's not very accessible, and then put a big actor like Nicolas Cage or a known actor like Nicolas Cage in it, and put it out for major release, and expect people to understand it. Like it was never going to happen. So I'm fine with it, but All I right. know other people won't be. And the defense retires. So I, I mean, I will admit. Uh, there were moments that entertained me, and and it wasn't it wasn't un- unpleasant viewing, and and for that, I'm well, gonna... I'd say some bits were. Well, the body horror in it towards the end just get a bit much, even for me. Okay, well, fair enough, but I'm I'm gonna give it, you know, I'll I'll give it a a three because it was shit. 